Good day everyone, today I'm going to talk about something that I think a lot of you have been nudging to me for a while now and I really actually also want to talk about it and it is one of the phenomena in digital art that is just so amazing and it's layers. So layers can both be very easy to understand and to use but they also have some very complex features with it as well. So I'm going to divide this video into two parts and the first one, which is this one, is going to be about layers and layers in general, blending modes, layer styles, adjustment layers, um, the fact that you can hide, unhide layers and so forth. And in the next video it's going to be all about masks. I think it makes sense because both of those topics are related and intertwined while they definitely also offer enough content to make a very long video so that's why I'm going to divide it into two parts. And as you already might know I'm a Photoshop artist so when I'm going to show you some demonstrations in my software it's going to be Photoshop. However I think that the knowledge about layers and the way that they work in general applies to just about all painting software that I'm aware of at the moment, at least as long as it supports layers. So you should be able to learn a bunch of stuff from this, whether you're using Metabank, Krita, Paint Tools I, or something completely else. So I think we should just get started now. I know that I have previously explained layers a bit in some videos here and there, but bringing it all together in this video I think is a good idea, so people don't have to go look for it in different videos. So. Let's start with some basics. What are layers? Well, imagine layers as pieces of transparent paper. You can draw on them individually, and when you watch them together, you see the combined content of the layers. This is especially a powerful tool if you want to remove or change a part of the drawing that is on a separate layer, because it doesn't affect the rest of the drawing. Layers usually also have what's called a blending mode. In most software that I have seen, the blending modes are listed in a drop-down menu somewhere in the panel with your layers. A blending mode is exactly what it sounds like. It's the way a layer can blend with the other layers. Blending modes are often split into categories of different overall behavior of the blending modes. In Photoshop, those are normal, which is the standard blending mode, which doesn't really do anything fancy. The next group contains blending modes that darkens the image in some way, while the next group lightens it. The fourth group provides contrast, and the next either inverts or completely cancels out values of the layer. The last group are layer components. Often they have to do with colors like saturation or desaturation. In this demonstration of blending modes, I've made a little colored box on each their own layer, as you can see out here. Each box represents their own blending mode, which I've typed out which blending mode it is, on the box. What I'll do now is just quickly visualize what blending modes can do and what it looks like. So besides the fact that these boxes will have a blending mode, you can also see that there this is in a hierarchy out here. So the normal box is at the bottom, so if I were to move it below the multiply layer or over it, it would go below. Now you don't see the effect from the multiply layer yet because it's still normal, but if we change it to multiply, you can see the effect of it. By the way, if you have the newest version of Photoshop, you don't have to actually click to preview the blending mode, you can just have your mouse hover over it like this. In this case, we are interested in putting this to multiply. So as I explained before, multiply lies in the category of blending mode, which darkens the picture. And as you can see, when the multiply layer gets over the normal layer, it darkens the values or the color that is already on the multiply layer because it multiplies its own values down on the normal layer. I'm going to move this back up. Now the screen is in the category that lightens. I put a little stroke around the box because of the way that the screen blending mode reacts. Against white, it just turns white. But if we move it over the multiply box, you can see that it actually lightens. And it uses the green main color that it had to lighten up the purple that goes underneath. I'm just going to change this back to normal so you can see it. 
Now, overlay is actually a little special, and I'm not going to go too much in depth with this, but basically overlay has some functions from the screen blend mode and the multiply blend mode. And it's actually one of my favorite blending modes to add both brightness and darkness to an image. Where is it? <laughs> there it is, overlay. So it reacts in the same way as screen to the white background, it just turns white. But you can see the effect when you move over the other layers. I'm just going to turn back to normal. Then there is subtract. And subtract is pretty unique, I don't use it a lot, but I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to select subtract, and as you can see it turns green. Which is kind of funny, right? If I'm zooming in here just a bit, I'm going to take my color picker and have the pink stroke picked up. And that's the color that the whole box had initially before it turned its blending mode to subtract. As you can see up here in my little color wheel, it lies about halfway through white and full saturated, and it's over here in the hues. But if I color pick the green one, you can see that it actually just inverts. So it's going to the complete opposite side of the color wheel in the hues, and it's shifted from this position to this position, which is also its opposite. I'll put a really good link in the description below to a blog page that explains all of the blending modes in detail right down to the mathematical functions. The last one we are going to look at is color. So I'm going to change this blending mode to color. And as you can see, it also reacts to the white background like most of the brightening and contrast layers do, it just turns white. But if I move it over, you can see that it actually adds its color to the other layers. And it's a little hard to see, but this color and this color, yes, they are probably the same hue, but they are not the same brightness. And that's because the color blending mode transfers its own hue down onto the layer below it, but it keeps some of the other components, such as the values, intact from the previous layer. So that was a short demonstration, and now I'm going to move on to something else. I just opened this older drawing that I did previously this year to demonstrate some other things you can do with layers. So some of the things you can do, for example, is to build a hierarchy in your drawing. For instance, at the bottom, if I hide this one, I have a sketch layer. And then on top of that, I have a whole bunch of other layers, which is currently hidden. So if I turn this back on, turn the sketch layer off, which you can do with the little eye icon, you can see that I have a whole bunch of layers here for whole different things in the drawing. And that's just the way that you can build it up in a hierarchy. You can also see you have some different layers for shadows, which is set to multiply, and some lights, which I use linear dutch for. And I also have some flats for the hair, the shadows for the hair, and some light for the hair. I have the line out here set to multiply and then I have some effects and highlights and my signature at the top. So that's one way that you can build up a drawing. Some people, including myself, like to, especially in complex drawings, to merge down layers or to group them. In this case I've grouped mine into this folder. The way you can do that is by selecting the layers that you want to group, either right click and say group from layers, or you can click Ctrl G. And then you have a new group and you can rename it and everything. Just going to go back a bit now. The other thing you can do is actually to merge them together. So if I were to select all of the layers in this group, I can right click and select merge layers. And then they all become one layer. Another way I can do it is just by hitting Ctrl E, and you get the same result. If there is a certain layer that you've been working on that you don't want to add anything extra to, you want to basically lock it so you can't interact with it, you just choose your layer and click the little lock pad up here. Then you see the lock icon here, you can't draw on it. 
The cursor just doesn't turn into the brush and you can't move it either. So that's just the way that you can protect your layer. And you can remove it by either clicking on it or clicking this icon up here again. Of course, you create new layers by clicking this little icon down here or you go to layer and say new layer, layer. Some layer. Like that. And you can delete them as well by either selecting your layer and clicking on the trash bin or you can just drag your layer down into the trash bin. Same goes for when you were grouping things before, you can also just click this little grouping icon. So that's probably the very basics of layers, but there's still two more things I want to go over in this video. Layer styles and adjustment layers. You can add a bunch of styles to your layers. Either double click the layer or right click and select blending options. A new window pops up. You can do a lot of different stuff to your layers from here and don't hesitate at all to experiment. You can add a, for instance, drop shadow to your layer or a glowing effect, a whole new color layer or a gradient, well, you name it. One thing you should be aware of though is that these effects often have a blending mode of their own as well. And it kind of overrules the blending mode that the layer initially had or adds itself to it. So for instance, let's say you have a layer that you set to multiply, then you double click it and you decide to add a color overlay and you set that color overlay to multiply as well. Then you have two times multiply on the same layer, one through the layer itself and one through the style that you added. It could work great in a lot of cases, but it may also cause a lot of confusion. But as long as you understand why you have two multiply layers, you should be just fine. The last thing I want to show you are adjustment layers. They are exactly what they sound like. Layers that adjust other layers. In Photoshop, you can find the adjustment layers by clicking on this icon. But I can't show it to you right now because of the way that my window is cropped. So I'm going to show you another way to find them. On the window, you can find this one called adjustments. And now we have it here as a panel. So instead of a list that you'll be given using this, you can now access them through this. And if you hover over them, you can also see what they do. Now what I use adjustment layers for mostly is at the end of a drawing. Well, often I actually find my images to be a bit dull, maybe too desaturated, maybe there isn't enough contrast. Then this is the part when I try to make some adjustments. So for instance, I want to pop the contrast on this girl a little more. So I'm going to find this one called brightness contrast. You can also use the levels, curves and exposure to add more contrast to the image, but let's just keep it simple and select brightness contrast. So what you can see happened is another window popped up and it's called properties. If it did not pop up, you can go to window and select properties and make sure it has this little tick. Then it should come up. If you by mistake hide it like this, you can just click it back. So what you notice perhaps is that a new layer was created when I clicked on the brightness contrast adjustment. That's because it's an adjustment layer. Don't worry too much about this part with the mask right here. I'm going to pick that up in part two when it gets a little more advanced. But for now, let's just open the properties panels. So you have a slider for brightness and you have a slider for contrast. And I'm going to add more contrast. I'm going to over-exaggerate it here, okay? So you can really see it. So I am going to adjust it just... There you go. And if you want to preview the effect and compare it to before you applied it, you can just hide and unhide the layer to view the difference. And you can see it became much more vibrant with a little more contrast, that, that is. So some of the other things you can do is, for instance, where is it here? I'm not used to look at it in here. Hue saturation. So it just creates another layer on top of the other adjustment layer. And here you can add some brightness, some more saturation, change the hue. 
that. And just because I want to demonstrate a little more, let's do something else. We can perhaps take the color, color balance. And basically what this does is that it looks at values in your image. Are they considered shadows, midtones or highlights? And depends on which one you choose, you can make color adjustment to that section. So everything that is bright is considered highlights. So everything bright in the image, I want them to be more blue. Everything that is considered shadows, I want them to be more like... Yeah, blue blue, the other was science, sorry. Like this. You can see it almost actually functions like Instagram filters. And basically this is also the technology or the methods behind filters. So I want to preview and compare to before I edit any adjusted layers. So I'm going to group them and call them adjustments. And then I can just hide and unhide and see the before and after. So in the next video, we're going to talk about masks. And basically what we're going to do is play with this little white icon here, which actually decides where the adjustment layers effects is applied and where it is not. Because right now we've been affecting the entire image with our adjustments, but there are easy ways to make sure that for instance, only the skin or the color would be affected. But we'll look at that next time. So thank you very much for watching my tutorial part one on layers. I hope it was useful to you even if you do not use Photoshop. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And these kind of tutorials are possible for me to make because I now have a Patreon and I have some amazing supporters in there. So if you'd like to support my work with down to as low as $1 a month and get some extra goodies which are exclusive for Patreon, then go and check that out. There'll probably be one or two videos before I upload part two because we are going to celebrate my 40k milestone here in YouTube one of the next times. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi hi!